They're going to look at this curriculum and say, you know what, this child is going into this school because of the marks and the curriculum that they're a part of. Not comparing themselves to a park, what are these schools now, like on the east side and shit. Sorry, woo, C-H-R-Y, my bad. I need something guaranteed, okay? I need to know that my child's going to be successful when this... This is a pilot project. I am tired that we take chances on our kids' future, and there's this ripple effect nobody's even looking at. What if this doesn't work? Yes, I know we've got to do something now. We've got to save this 40%. But this, what's happening here is there's too many holes, there's not enough security, and I'm not sending my kid in the basement of a church to get his high school diploma. For real. Amen. I was thinking of the um, stats from the Aboriginal, the First, the First Nations School that's located down, downtown. And it was created in order to ensure that Aboriginal people were aware of their own experiences and their culture. But in the last 10 years, you have seen a decline in, our, in the Aboriginal schools. And I'm just wondering if we develop an Afrocentric school, are we going to see a ghettoization of these black schools? Thanks a lot for your answers to that question. We're going to move right along and answer the fourth question, which has to do with the curriculum. And how can we educate and ultimately empower our youth about their own history with or without a black focus school? I'm going to pose that question against the team four, and that's going to start with and two minutes each per palace, and then four minutes as well. It's pretty straightforward in terms of the curriculum. Um, I always say that we don't want any special treatment, we just want the truth taught. And the truth is that black people have been <coughs> written out of the curriculum, they've been written out of history in very fundamental, critical ways. I'm not talking about post-slavery, I'm not talking about black inventors, I'm talking about the idea that we are the fathers and mothers of civilization. And if black youth understood that from a very early age, mathematics would be a breeze, science would be, would be a breeze, and if the teachers were taught this, they wouldn't come into the classroom with the attitude that black people haven't done anything. See, we're dealing with people, in a, see, children pick up on all sorts of things, and whether you openly or covertly tell them that they're inferior, they're going to pick up on it. If they're in an environment that constantly telling them that, thank God we came and rescued you in the jungle, and if you do really well, you can play ball and be Beyonce, then clearly that's all they're going to aspire to. If, you're, if they're taught by teachers who automatically feel that everything we do is a threat, all our talent has to automatically be ADHD as opposed to being gifted. Everything we do has to be viewed in a negative light. They're going to be quick to suspend, quick to punish, quick to expel, quick to criminalize. So in terms of what can we do with or without a black focus school, change your curriculum. You can still have a black focus school and change your curriculum. This is one or the other. <coughs> we keep saying the parents should do it at home. A lot of our parents don't have a clue about knowledge of self. They don't know anything about black history. They went through the same foolish system themselves. So to say, oh, well, black parents, you know, you need to step up to the plate. They can't give what they were never given. A lot of the stuff that I'm talking about in terms of history, it's in the teacher's college. It's not like these people don't have access to the information. So ask yourself, why is it not in the curriculum? We should not have to start from scratch. We should not have to beg and scrape for everything. All we want is truth in the curriculum. And if we're teaching our children the truth, they will excel. Period. If you don't want special treatment, just the truth. And if it happens that black people did it, then so be it. The way I look at it is I teach history as a story. What was, what happened to change it, and what was the result? Okay? I never start with the end. I always start with the beginning. I mean, I never start with the, the beginning, I always start with the end. And the end is us. We're the result of history. And if you look at us, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. If we even have to mention what's going on today, something's wrong. We are defective. Now, the thing is, we go back in history, and we study ancient Africa. 180 degrees from where we're at. 180 degrees. We were in economies. We were the, 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 uh, the fathers of civilization in many ways. What happened to change it? Slavery and colonialism. Uh, all of a sudden, when you start to realize, when kids start to realize that their birthright is what was in ancient Africa and not what is today, this corporate construct of what blackness is, right, which is a lie mm -hmm. and is warped, they will change. That's right. well, the thing is, you need a place to teach them and to teach teachers how to do that. Thanks, David and Ankem, for the answers to that question. We're going to start back with the team against, with Soraya. And Sabrina, same question, curriculum. How can we educate and ultimately empower our youth about their own history with or without a black focus school? Um, okay. So let me flip this for a second. What if we approach this on a world religion perspective? We live in multicultural Toronto, 
there is diversity, there is a, a melting pot going on here in Toronto. Why not come at it uh, biracial? Like, my son is Indian and black. Yes, okay, I have the tools that I can support him at home and show him both walks of life. Show him my history, show him his father's history. Not all parents have these tools. Fine, I get that. But, I mean, to approach this on a world perspective, there is a lot of ancient worlds that can tap into this, that can frame a perspective that our children can all benefit. There's, like, I mean, for it to be focused, I see the point, but I mean, like, what if? I'm done. Okay, um, personally, um, what my opponents have been saying is fact. But I believe that everything starts off with the teacher training that the new teachers are getting. Teacher training right now should be community-based. Mm -hmm. That is lacking. Mm -hmm. We need to start with the teachers. Mm -hmm. These are who are in contact with the students. Yes, yes. The teachers yeah. need to learn about not only the African culture, but also the Indo culture, the Asian culture. Mm -hmm. All these things have to be ingrained into the curriculum. In our lessons, too often teachers teaching for the last 30 years tend to be too lazy to go and do a little extra research and try to incorporate about African veil when they're teaching social studies. All teachers, regardless of race, class, color, sexual orientation, should be able to incorporate various cultures within our society. At the end of the day, Toronto is a multicultural society, and we need to start incorporating this multiculturalism in our lessons. So if we're going to challenge the Eurocentric uh, curriculum, then maybe in a world perspective point of view would be a start. Okay, thanks, Soraya, for your response to that question. We're going to have